Okay, everybody. Okay, hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, we had some technical issues here this morning and lost Wi-Fi. Had to reboot, uh, to reconnect to the LAN, and let me just move this window over here. There are quite a few steps to getting all this technology working, you guys, so uh, sorry for the late start. Uh, but we will dive into it momentarily. It looks like a full room here, and so uh, welcome, you guys. I uh, see some familiar names. Uh, Todd and Dr. T, Nathan, Mary, and Perry, if I missed anybody, uh, welcome everybody else. So uh, Alex, of course. So anyway, um, lots to cover here today. Uh, we'll start with some news here and I just want to make sure we're recording on all the screens. Looks like we are. All right. Uh, so I've um, been sitting here just for 10 minutes, clicking all the right buttons, getting the auto working and uh, my background image uh, disappeared. All these tech issues. So, so anyway, uh, I won't. That's enough of that. So basically, um, I did release a study yesterday that I'll link to, by the way, and um, looking at some Elliott Wave patterns here. I don't do a lot of these, but there's some interesting uh, implications here that uh, we'll cover and cover in more detail in our M3 class tomorrow. So if you're not already a member of M3, if you like what you see here today, these are our free classes where we're gonna cover some news and we're gonna go over our, our indicators, which are giving us some really strong signals right now. And of course you can find out more about us over at moonstream.io and any of our services uh, down below and including the uh, free services. If you'd like, if you're watching the recording, I would like to see this class live every Tuesday, come down here and sign up for that right here and uh, also our Monday newsletter. And uh, we will be talking about our trader success checklist, um, by the way, which um, uh, I have updated. Uh, Myrene, if you were able to open that file and you have a new one to share, uh, please do so. I would love to uh, use that one here today. Uh, I think mine should still work. <clears throat> All right, so uh, there is an updated version with our new signals. So with that, uh, let's do this. Um, we Our markets are down slightly, another 700. The reasons are, let's talk about why that may be. And I'll go ahead and dive in. So essentially, uh, this is something one of our M3 members alerted me to uh, the other day. And this has been brewing for some time. But, um, you know, the port strike is kind of big news. They were unable to reach a deal with the uh, Maritime Group and the government. And they are basically asking for a 77% raise in wages over the next five years, I believe it is, or a number of years. And they feel uh, sort of taken advantage of all through COVID when these guys were showing up. To work and loading the containers. Uh, you know, interesting timing of all this going into an election cycle and uh, trying to sort of strong arm the powers that be. So, you know, I'm not sure how this thing's going to play out, but it doesn't uh, look good. There's potentially billions in trade disruption, but how it's going to affect crypto, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure that it really will, other than the in initial uncertainty. And uh, we'll touch on, you know, we've talked about this before. I don't mean to laugh, but it's, you know, whenever we get up to like a key inflection point in the markets, let me just pull up Bitcoin and an obvious resistance area that we've been watching already. You know, you hear me say a hundred times, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. You know, we got up in this range and I did redraw the angle on this because I had it drawn a little deeper, uh, less steep and thought this was the breakout to a new trend channel and I have one drawn on another chart, but we have to be willing to realize that that may not have been the channel all along. Maybe it was more like this and still in a parallel down a channel. I do believe we put in a higher low and bounce. So the TLDR on this, if you're just going showing up here, I think we should have a cycle low here around end of the week. And October is, has been 100% green. October, November, December has been 100% green, both when September was a nut month. We'll pull this up and also during election cycles, you guys. So we have to be ready for when it comes. October is here and that is the good news. However, our, our early reversal indicator has been showing uh, each time when we had a cycle downturn and it's been very effective. So uh, I didn't like to see that in yesterday's candle, but we do have to prepare for a couple more days of downside. I do think we'll hold around the 60K level and we'll break, we get that as a bounce point higher. Um, just to come back to that though, my initial comment that I diverted from there is it's amazing how price will push up into key areas where it would otherwise reverse. And then miraculously some news comes out and, um, you know, knocks it out of the sky like a good old fashioned Chinese weather balloon. We, you know, we have Bitcoin. We've seen this a few times pushing up and hovering for a few days and then dr a drop. And then uh, and so I think that's uh, we have a couple more days of downside because we had, you know, basically 10 days of virtually all up and uh, longer than that since September. 
a sixth. So uh, anyway, what I am looking for here again and would like to see, not that I'd like to see, what I think we see is this kind of a deal. And then this is a question mark here. We've got to get above that congestion, but I think we'll do that this month. Uh, however, uh, we just don't know how this is all going to be affected by the port strike. Uh, so anyway, um, and good thing I just ordered my Samsung refrigerator. It'll be here on uh, Thursday. So I'm happy about that. I uh, won't be caught in the embargo or the port strike. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see. Port strike, Dow, S&P 500 record highs. So the port strike will affect maybe, you know, the Dow and um, other um, stocks more than crypto, obviously. So anyway, we'll have to watch this. Uh, this. This could be a long drawn out problem, though, that affects the overall economy. And um, and so um, I'm just not sure this is a, a new one for me. And um, but uh, for uh, consumers at the stores, right, higher prices and uh, harder to get some things when they run out of uh, the shortages. Now, the retailers have been stocking up on all these things. And so maybe there's a deal to be had sooner than later. And this is a nothing burger, just more FUD. We'll have to see. We have no way to know. I did hear some uh, some rumblings of escalation in the the war, and well, I have to clarify that these days, you know, the Israel, we'll call it the conflict, Israeli um, and Lebanon conflict. Somebody said something that there were some ballistic missiles being prepared. Um, I do have to prepare you guys if there's a missile launch of any significance, and I don't mean the rockets. Not that they're insignificant, but, um, a, you know, a, a, a serious warhead launch and escalation in this conflict uh, it will certainly spook the markets and be a good buying opportunity, uh, I believe. So anyway, Bitcoin all time high target remains uh, as Bitcoin price bounces back. So so we did have a nice weekly close up above 65K and uh, had that weekly candle put in. However, uh, yesterday's candle sort of negated that to some degree. So, you know, we're, we're just need to wait it out. I think it'll be a slow week and then we'll really see some movement here potentially uh, coming into next week. But the problem also is that there's too much uh, bullishness in the market. And um, the sentiment put out a study basically saying, um, but we could probably find it here if we want to pull that up. We'll do that on another tab. And um, and it, if everyone's bullish, there was a hundred articles uh, bullish uh, to everyone uh, that was bearish. And so that's typically a contrary indicator. So let me just pull this up here. Um, I'll go straight over to sentiment. We'll pull it up because they've got some pretty good tools. So uh, let's see. So basically, the social trends, trending world, a uh, summary. This is not what I was looking for. The uh, sand base uh, charts, screeners, and try to have that pulled up ahead of time. But let's look at the fear and greed index because uh, that can also be useful. And let's see. I usually have these saved. A lot of my favorites and things across the board were erased, including my background, uh, our cool background here uh, for this class. Had to re-download that and uh, so forth. But um, all right, somewhere in here, there's a way to search this fear and the greed. So the problem is we're up too far, too far up in the greed category. And uh, this is not coming up for me. So I'm going to move it off screen, let you guys look at this. And we'll just review some news here in a minute. But uh, let me pull this up. And in the old Google machine, that's the best way to do it sometimes. So let's see. There it is. Stay here. Don't go anywhere. I'm pulling it up as we speak. There's that good old fear and greed chart. So uh, this is something that um, we're going to want to look at here. Now, these overlays, um, it's, it's uh, the positive sentiment. Yeah, exactly. So basically positive sentiment and negative sentiment. Now, this is more than you want to look at here um, right now. Let me take these off. So uh, the point I was trying to make is uh, there's too much bullishness. And um, that is a different indicator. We have the weighted sentiment. But um, let me get rid of that. I just want to look at fear and greed for right now. And so uh, this, uh, sorry guys, this uh, this looks different to me than it usually does. And I need, I'm trying to zoom out here. This is um, only through uh, the, uh, it's only through January of 2024. Something's going on here, guys. I don't know. Maybe I need to log in to this. Uh, so, you know what, I'm going to keep going. I guess we'll cover that tomorrow and uh, retire, sorry, in N3 Active Trader. So uh, basically, uh, that's a TLDR, you guys. Uh, too much bullishness in the markets. You guys can Google and find that article that I saw today at somewhere. So um, crypto hacks, press, more hacks in the marketplace, just skimming these other news. But essentially, um, yeah, more hacks. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, unfortunately, these are still happening. 
But this is a good reminder not to have crypto or not have any uh, significant amount on these offshore exchanges that are still still susceptible to these hacks. I would keep them, if you're not putting on cold storage, I would be keeping them on some of the more major exchanges like a Coinbase, Gemini, Kraken, Binance, if you have access to it. And uh, But yeah, September, 61% increase in losses from hacks compared to August, but uh, still significant, 314 million. Uh, we are still in the uh, wild, wild west, it appears. And so keep your crypto safe, you guys. Uh, it is, uh, it's is—it's going to be a while before they actually get this fully figured out. Uh, it is um, it is a, uh, a nascent industry and still the wild, wild west. Let's see. Did I read this right? Inflation data platform, Truflation, was how was that hacked for 5.6 million? I don't know. These... Yeah, I, that's it's another reason to keep um, with these better known platforms like crypto lender Shazmu. Never heard of it. So um, not to get down a rabbit hole here, let's move on. But um, going back to this Bitcoin article on um, 64K, we'll look at that in the uh, charts. So we've since lost that. Um, but, um, you know, I think we will bounce back strong. So here's a good uh, reminder that, uh, and I'll just point out, as I was saying, that 100% of the time in both election years and also when we have a green September, so we had 2015 and 2016. 2016, of course, an election year was up 6%. The October, November, December also up nicely in the green. So if we fast forward... Uh, now, 2020 um, still had three, we had, 20, uh, we had nice gains, if you remember, in October, November, December. That was great. 30%, 42%, 46%. So, bodes well for this election cycle. Now, last year, we had, now we were back to back. We've got, uh, we had a green September, just mildly, and then we had up both in October, November, December. Those of you know who know um, and remember in our Retire Rich class, uh, we had some great picks. We were buying in early October and uh, some are up hundreds of percent and uh, some even 500 percent. So that's hoping for a repeat of that uh, September of this year, re repeating a, a green month here, eking that out toward the end. And so we are going to look for three more green months here. Um, history has a tendency repeating itself. We have both the September clue and the election, of course. So that's good news. And any pullback here should not be uh, bad. I have been saying and was saying even last week to wait for, I think the market's pullback slightly, and that'll be a good buying opportunity. I personally jumped the gun a little bit, took some profits in Solana and was buying more altcoins in case we ro roared out of this on Monday. But uh, anyway, um, I'm holding strong there and we'll uh, wait that out for the bounce probably in the next day or two, maybe toward the end of the week. We'll look at our signals, which are showing signs of rolling over. And um, we can see that here with our early reversal indicator, which are these red arrows. <clears throat> these have been excellent on the weekly time frame and also uh, are part of our market top emergency uh, signal that uh, we'll be uh, releasing to our members as we go. And when we see that, uh, we did catch that, by the way, right in here. And I put out an alert saying, hey, guys, we should be going higher to new all-time highs here. But this is part of our, our bearish uh, market alert. So we did um, to choose to get out or I gave the uh, alert that may want to take some money off the table. And sure enough, we dropped about, uh, was it 20%? It was this, I can't remember. We, we were uh, advising that once we had that signal and went down about 20%. Yeah. And so anyway, uh, those of you that avoided that, um, great. If you don't have the indicators and would like to find out more about them, go over to moonstream.io and you can click on this button here for these crypto mastery signals. That is the purpose of these classes to also do some training on those. So we'll do some live market conditions and tutorials with the indicators, but I do recommend go over to this link here at cryptomastery.org slash pro to get a great deal on our lifetime signals on our pro indicators and uh, go through this training here. It'll give you all of the, the data and the proof that these signals really are giving us an advantage and can give you an advantage too. Uh, I'm a 25 year trader. Trust me, you need to have these or you'll be competing against people that do have them. And um, okay, jumping around a little bit, I want to come back to these studies here, but essentially uh, back to the daily on Bitcoin, you know, on this trend strength indicator here, when we see this get up in this red range and roll over and come below 80, 
with a red signal, that means there's more downside to come. We're going to see a couple more days of downside, uh, potentially down in this range, but actually that would set us up for a phenomenal bounce out of this area. So I do think we would kind of pull down in here to Friday or Saturday this week, and then we see a rip-roaring bounce. That's also the cycle low. Uh, those of you that are in our market timing secrets, so uh, I was I was hoping we'd have it on our website here, but we have a course called Market T Timing Secrets, and uh, also another one called Yield Max. We'll be adding to this, so um, in the next few days, uh, uh, you'll see that here. But our market timing market timing secrets. Um, course uh, that is by Juan Will of Villaverde, who's a very accomplished uh, cycles trader and um, is predicting and forecasting that we see a cycle low in here October 4th, October 5th, and uh, then bouncing out of that up into these higher ranges. So we'll keep an eye out for that. But for now, bearish signals, we have bearish ERI, bearish TSI, and our signal line has now gone red. So on the daily basis, bearish signals. However, on the weekly time frame, we have bullish signals here. And so that's why a pullback here on the daily, but still pushing higher on the weekly uh, still is uh, more likely than not. I do have a bearish engulfing candle as of now. So it's sort of mixed signals, but I do think we're going to get a, a low, higher low and then bounce out of that. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, it, this, these markets are very much news driven these days. And so uh, anything could happen. All right, uh, let's see. And also somebody talking about the monthly quarterly close. We'll pull that up as well. The monthly close uh, didn't close as well as we had hoped here. If I jump over to a monthly chart at one point uh, when we were pushing up here towards 65K, that was a big green and bullish engulfing candle here. But then with that sell-off coming into the end of the month, a monthly close now, not a bullish engulfing candle and sort of risking this breaking below 80. You don't want to see this on the monthly time frame. So we really need to see this uh, to um, bounce right out of this area. I'm going to do an alert on this uh, breaking down below 80 on a monthly time frame, which would uh, which not would not be a good sign. That's not our only signal and it's not our bear market emergency signal, but generally these cycles do oscillate and play out, uh, especially when that 80 line is broken. So if you're here for training on the crypto mastery indicators, that's how you would use that. Uh, we also had some bearish divergence here a few months back. So that doesn't mean we don't go higher first. Um, let me um, jump out of the monthly time frame. I guess we'll go look at the quarterly. Quarterly is a bit much, a bit far to look at on this. Um, you know, cryptos uh, can change on a hard, on a dime. But, um, you know, the last month, the last quarter was a spinning top, which is not entirely, it's not, it's, it's chosen indecision. I'm glad that it was at least green. If it was a red spinning top, that would indicate more downside potentially, but this uh, bottoming tail signifies the bulls were in control more than not. So I think the quarterly is not really relevant for us uh, at this time. So uh, anyway, let's keep going. I want to finish off the news and come back to the charts and um, we'll make our own decisions here. Let's see, Bitcoin, US dollar daily. I do want to look at the VIX, uh, sorry, not the VIX, the DXY. And uh, there's some important levels we want to pay attention uh, to there. And we usually cover in that M3 active trader class tomorrow, which is like this. We go a little deeper and do coin picks, et cetera, and TA on specific projects. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our M3 active trader class, now's a great time to get involved, especially with this market heating up and, and you get a cool hat. Go over to this link here for moonstream.io slash m3 and you can read all about that here uh, about my background of uh, the 24 uh, 7 active trader chat room that's very active with great traders very smart traders in here we're building a great ecosystem and i do make trade alerts and daily posts in there plus a lot of cool bonuses so uh, make sure you go and uh, check that out i'll just drop that uh, over here in the uh, chat so let's see, and there that is. Uh, okay, thank you, Perry. Some people throwing links out, trying to help out. Appreciate that. Let's pull up that fear and greed index and have a look there. Um, let's see. Also, Perry saying Black Friday isn't that far away. Yeah, well, I know that. Uh, that uh, right. So I don't know. That would be uh, not good for Black Friday, which could hurt the economy. I mean, these guys have timed it well. Um, their uh, strike, but uh, I think they're being greedy. The the other side of that, just to hop back over to that for a minute, um, but they were offered a 50% pay raise. I think I might have closed that article already. They were offered a 50% pay raise and they chose not to take it. So they're being a little bit greedy 
uh, with this um, this uh, scenario here. And so, you know, we'll see what happens. Who caves first? Uh, I won't go into too much details. The government, um, you know, they're allowed to invoke the um, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but there's a um, uh, an act where they can force these guys back to work. And uh, they it's probably in here somewhere. But uh, Biden said he's not going to do it. it. Sounds like he doesn't really want to do anything. He's got one foot out the door. And uh, so, you know, but uh, we'll we'll kind of see how that plays out. I don't want to go on any deeper on that. It doesn't affect us directly. So let's just uh, discuss this here. We have that. We covered that. Quantile regression. Um, you know, that's this. I don't know what this means. 275 Bitcoin by November 2025. I mean, look, I guess a little bit of opium could do um, help us right here. However, uh, I don't know who this person is. And I do want to remind, as I've been talking about in the M3 Active Trader class, by the way, the, uh, you know, be aware of the hype cycle and when that begins. And when we start seeing raised uh, target levels on Bitcoin prices, aka this person right here, you know, at the peak of the bull run is when we see the most of that, if you remember in the last bull run. So um, have a little bit of, um, you know, contrarian uh, mindset with all this. So um, I'll look at this for sure. I've done my own studies. I think 100K Bitcoin, uh, most likely 150K Bitcoin, um, you know, that's kind of my more my top, toward the top of where I think we could go if we break that 250 uh, is the, on the high end, 275, there's, it's a bit of a stretch. So let's see, uh, quasi-exponential decay trend. I mean, th this is where things get um, a little bit uh, out on the fringe. And so these are, a lot of these models are developed on past, you know, history. And then, um, you know, it's like most indicators are developed in bull markets and back tested extensively on, until a, a new scenario happens and they don't work. So anyway, um, Let's see a bull flag. I, you know, like some people keep talking about the bull flag. I've been talking about a bull flag for, you know, eight, nine months now. But the problem is the longer a bull flag goes, it's no longer a bull flag. Uh, it's a, it's a parallel channel, but um, bull flags usually resolved by now. And we need to see that uh, happen soon. Now they're basically, I don't know why they're sawing, calling it a quasi, whatever they're calling it. A bull flag is a bull flag. So the bullish, the measured move from this flagpole, they are using here a monthly chart I had uh, yeah failed bullish engulfing, but um, my projections put that up around 150k Bitcoin and not 250. So this is is a bit of a stretch, or it may be okay. So that was no, that was the bull flag. So this linear regression, like there's a lot of uh, pontification on what could happen. We're not going to look that far in the future. We need to get and close above 74k, 75k, and uh, otherwise the rest of this is just uh, dubious speculation as. Um, uh, ben Cowan would say. So there's really no point at this point. We will go as far as we can see. And then from there, we'll be able to see farther. Gold back ecosystems aims to bridge blockchain to trade fi. I don't really want to get into this. Um, let's do this. Let me hop over to Crypto Panic and just see and if we can see anything else that's uh, on the radar and uh, more timely. So hopefully not. Uh, Bitcoin's October potential. Let's see, you know, um, we discussed that a little bit a minute ago. Let's look at anything else. Uh, some more we talked about. Bitcoin hackers still 750 million in Q3. Yeah, we touched on that too. But, um, you know, uh, a lot of that's happened in these over overseas exchanges and the not, um, you know, these other companies that are just getting started. I don't see much more. I was reading about the Eigen layer uh, and... Um, I'll touch on that. Eigenlayer is being dubbed as sort of the uh, the killer app for Ethereum because, uh, you know, Ran uh, from Banter was on today saying he's given up on ETH. You know, he's selling all of his ETH and uh, had some interesting thoughts on where he was going to put that. But uh, at any rate, um, basically suggesting Eigenlayer is the new ETH app they just released. But it's he's kind of like I said, it was sort of a, a so what um, and part of the... Um, Issue has got a huge valuation, a coin, a huge, uh, fully diluted valuation of six point five billion, which means they can dump a lot more of that uh, on the market. So this eigen layer, I'm not going to get into this, and um, I don't, uh, you know, I like to trade the charts. Show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. So touching on this October potential, another rally in the cards. Uh, we just touched, talked about why that's likely, but doesn't mean it has to happen. Um, I'm staying long. I'm, I'm, we're, you know, I was saying to our M3 members last week, uh, small dip and then up. And so we're going to be looking for that dip going into later in the week, Thursday, Friday-ish, and looking for signs this thing's going to push up higher from there. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Bitcoin price went up 42%, lower than Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy. However, over time, MicroStrategy has 3 x the returns on Bitcoin. So keep that in mind. And if, you, if you're if you a stock person and just want to buy stocks, Bitcoin and Coinbase would be two good choices. Uh, you know, Rand was also saying that Coinbase might be his, his where he'll put his ETH because it benefits directly from the bullishness of the markets and uh, it's not as risky as some of these other altcoins. And so I think that's a fair point. Um, real wealth is made in markets over longer term timeframes, 10 years. Think Amazon, think Netflix, think category killers and the first mover advantage companies. So who's likely to be a future Amazon, Netflix and Apple of the blockchain? Coinbase. Um, however, I mean, if you're able to ride the bull market, bear market swings, that would be the way to play it uh, for some uh, less risky, longer term um, benefits uh, and returns, especially if we get a pro crypto and a um, uh, administration to come in and get uh, Gary Gensler off our back, who has uh, largely been uh, a uh, you know damaging the, the momentum and growth of the industry. Certainly Coinbase has had their trouble with them. So uh, keep that in mind here. Let's see, 94% of Bitcoin is available, such highs, low, it's low raising price, seen on the charts. Yeah, um, the on-chain metrics have been showing bullish accumulation by the whales. I don't get into that in these classes. It's, uh, it's a whole other rabbit hole and usually is delayed data. Uh, you'll see the movements generally in the charts. So show me the charts and I will tell you the news. All right, there you have it. Fear and greed index right back to 50. So we'd like to see it down into the sphere zone to get another bounce up. Remember last month we were firmly down in fear at 26 and we had a big rally out of that. Uh, but uh, we also had some long leverage to sort of flesh out of the system. And I think that's what's happening right now. People got too bullish and they started buying up leveraged uh, long um, options and also uh, perpetual futures. And so this is just a bit of that washout here being seen, which is healthy. Uh, guys, it's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. I'm glad we did not get a, a bearish ERI here yet. If we do get a bearish ERI, then we have a different conversation. I'm going to pause for a second so I have your attention. Um, we have learned to be not emotional about uh, these um, signals and the setups. So I'm just cleaning up these little dots here. Paying attention to the weekly ERI. If we have weekly ERI, if we have that with a bearish engulfing candle, okay, which we sort of, we do have that right now. If we also see one of our other indicators turn red, if we see our trend strength indicator go red, then we're going to be looking to get out. And I don't want to say that. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you know, RSI uh, looks fine for now. And our signal line is is still red. It was just about to cross up higher, which would have been very bullish. And all that means is we've got to wait just a little bit longer. Again, this uh, bull flag here, we needed to put in a higher low. If it does come down, remember, I do have that study on the four hour I bit. The BlackRock ETF showing there's an unfilled gap, 15% lower from here. And so if we do have that gap fill, you know, that puts us down in this range, down around 52K again, certainly could see that. That's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, we could see some fear-based drops. That would be excellent, another excellent buying opportunity. But at some point, this thing should rally up higher, uh, short of any uh, unforeseen things to come out. But uh, we have liquidity cycle starting. And we uh, we watched that study last week. I can uh, you can find a link to that up um, or Google that on TradingView. Possibly I'll pull it up here to look at again. But you know, look if if we do come back down in this range, a it will cement the fact that that study is valid. Let me pull up and that chart here just to look at that one more time. And I'm really trying to be aware of my own confirmation bias, not trying to be married not be married to any one thing, but uh, let's see, we've got so many studies saved. I'll just search for it here, DXY. And uh, what am I doing, you guys? Not the DXY, it's the IBIT chart that I'm looking for. It's been one of those mornings, you guys. So uh, let's see. 
Um, this is the study here. Great. So looking at this, um, okay, but this is interesting. I'm glad we pulled that up. We'll dive into this a little more detail here tomorrow in the M3 class. Do you guys, what do you see? Well, we see two things. Uh, it, all gaps have not filled today. Up until this point, all of these gaps had filled similar to the CME gaps. We have an unfilled gap down here at around 30. So that would be about 15% lower from here. And uh, so you're getting the phone call. The telemarketers love to bother me right here at uh, noon. And I thought I had airplane mode that. Okay. So basically we have a, uh, a new unfilled gap right in here to the upside. So, um, you know, these gaps can take a while to fill and that is going to act as a magnet on the upside. So if we do this and move that over, um, you know, so far and until this starts to not work, we're going to keep following it. So we do have a, a magnet to, to pull back up to those recent highs where we had that upward trending channel. What I don't like about this chart certainly is, you know, we've been using trend channels a lot more. And back here, you know, we pushed up higher and we thought we were going to new highs and it broke into a new downward trending channel. So as of now, we are in a new downward trending channel. And this is uh, something that um, is, again, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing. I would want to see it bounce out of this range, though, and then push higher, putting in a higher low. I'm fine with being wrong and leaving this unfilled gap. Maybe it gets filled farther down the road. We just don't know. But as of now, we do have a magnet here pulling prices back up higher, potentially. Let's see, jumping back to the charts, uh, or the chat rather, where do we find replays of this class? Uh, Dr. T, you'd have to be a member of the Crypto Mastery Group. I know we um, we chatted about that, I believe. So um, I would go over to CryptoMastery.org slash pro. And they're uploaded uh, to the uh, members area there. Uh, they're free live for everybody as trainings. Uh, they are... Um, Let's see. Uh, see, Francisco says Israel invade. Did 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 they invade Lebanon? Um, I don't know why they didn't come up on the news, or is that potentially happening? Francisco, I uh, can't cover all the news. I spend hours every morning before class watching select videos, getting a um, overview of everything. And let's see, uh, Crypto Mastery Taft Hartley, I thank you uh, for that. And this is uh, <laughs> the my phone refuses to uh, turn off here. Uh, let me just turn this thing off so it stops calling. Cool. And um, today, two question: Does a radar indicator perform any forward projections? Um, Perry, yeah, we'll get to that. I'll pull up the radar. And um, it, uh, it's, 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 it's lagging. Well, it's both, you know, the question is, does the radar, which currently is not turned on here, um, this is our multi time frame radar. And what this does is it gives a, it uses the same signal that the institutions, most of them use. It's a modified stochastics RSI. And a lot of the programmatic buying and selling is based on that per Joe, our programmer, uh, trader. Um, you guys know Joe. He was for formerly a uh, institutional trader. He understands this uh, much deeper level uh, than most people. So what we're looking for here is confluence. If these are all red, we don't want to be buying. If it's all green, green is go. That's a good final uh, nudge to get into markets. Also works on multiple time frames. You can adjust these too. I've used it very well with day trading and swing trading. So you can go in here, right click, go into the inputs, and uh, you can uh, change the uh, different parameters, a number of different parameters here, the stochastics length and overbought. I wouldn't mess with any of these. I would, where uh, did I miss it here? Time frames. So I have it on, uh, my default is daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, okay? Uh, you can change that if you want to day trade with it. You could do one minute, three minute, five minute, 15 minute, or three, five, 15 on an hourly. But uh, I've watched this on those time frames when suddenly they all tick green, a programmatic buy comes in and it goes up. So uh, you can play around with this quite a bit uh, and, and learn this. But on these uh, daily time frames, longer time frames, you know, I'm mostly looking for it to all go green. And align with our other signals and uh, if it's red we're still bullish on a weekly and that could change but really what i wanted to talk about here and i will pull it up on the, the bitcoin chart is just looking at this um this i bit here which is uh, in a new downward trending channel so again i think a few more days of selling off we could come down and all the markets here about their five percent 
you know, I'm probably, you know, probably I was busy yesterday working, so I wasn't watching the markets that closely, or I might have taken some money off of the table here, just looking at the weekly on this. I'll come back to this study on the Elliott wave, because I'll touch on that a little bit. And uh, I had put a video out on TradingView yesterday. If you want to find that, just Google me, uh, Brett Fogel Trading View. And uh, this link here did uh, a study um, right in this um, this top one here. Basically, the crypto market forecast based on some Elliott Wave studies that I had saved on my computer. I'll just pull up that chart so you guys can see it. And uh, I it was from 2000. It was from 2022, and I'm projecting uh, these this wave pattern. And so I did an update on this, which shows this mostly playing out. But this projecting the top out in October of 2025 as the standard four year cycle would normally be. But as we know, we are we saw having before uh, in the um, uh, sorry, we had an all time high before the having. So left translated cycle maybe accelerated cycle is uh, what I th I'm proposing in this study. So we'll see uh, over on TradingView, uh, this you know, hit play and it will show how things actually play out. So we can't cheat that. We'll see if, that's, uh, if that plays out. Uh, let's see. So come back to that. The IBIT, I think we covered. I um, will pull up the uh, DXY real quick because I want to see this and see where we're at with that. And then I'll get back to some questions. And then, uh, and then we'll get into our uh, trade success checklist. All right, DXY. So the thing with the DXY is really want to wait and see. Well, when they, when the DXY breaks below 100, um, we are off to the races. Yeah, but as I expected, the uh, the dollar strengthening, not sure why, but this is not a good bounce for us in terms of the markets on Bitcoin because these usually run in uh, uh, inversely, I was going to say in conjunction, trying to do too many things at once. Uh, but uh, yeah, these are two downward trending channels here. I would like to see the DXY pull back today. If we start putting in new uptrend channel on the DXY, then we could have trouble. We could have maybe a down October or um, you know, maybe it bounce up. You know, maybe maybe it balances up and retests. This hundred level is very significant down here uh, that I have already marked because um, if we get back down below that, that is a a new low, new to your cycle low. We could saw that that's where it held back in this range. And uh, when we get below that, though, we're really getting into a Bitcoin rally zone and super Bitcoin rally zone. So so you know, we're close, you guys. I just what we don't want to see is like a long push up higher on the Dixie, the dollar strengthening like for multiple weeks or months. And, you know, then this, this, everything's out the window. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping, not hoping, I, I don't trade on hopium. All signs are pointing toward a very strong last Q4, but the more people that are saying that, the more chances of a surprise and uh, that's usually what happens, right? So we'll keep an eye on this. I'll certainly unpack that in more detail on tomorrow's class. So uh, with that out of the way here, uh, what else do we want to talk about? Um, the Elliott Wave pattern here, essentially what I was saying is that based on this study that I just showed you guys, right? So which would show typically the top of the market happens 539 days after the halving. Well, we had an all-time high early before the halving. So this is skewed, right? But uh, 539 days would put the market top at... Uh, Let's see, I have to show what's in the actual graphic. Otherwise, it's misleading. October of 2025. And, um, and you know, does that, I think it's, I think we get there sooner, you guys, is my point. We don't know yet. I, I'm certainly not um, married to that. I would love to see the bull uh, last that long. But, um, you know, uh, and maybe that's the surprise and the cause of the most pain. But what I'm seeing here is, and you can see clearly, guys, by the way, are, on this weekly time frame, our early reversal indicator showing right here, right in excellent time, September of 2023, and uh, getting above the 21 and 50 day exponential moving averages. And that's when we were buying. We went on a buying spree in the retire rich class. Uh, if that, if you're more of a buy and hold investor and you'd like to uh, really optimize and maximize this bull session, go over to our website and click on the uh, retire rich sign that's where we're giving you lots of different we're doing weekly classes on thursdays with mike and i and um, you can go watch a short to highlight reel uh, of that here and you can also go see some of our biggest winning trades we have had some excellent winning trades in that 
And uh, if, you, if you want more action and, you know, you really want to lock in bigger gains, you can go do that on our Retire Rich class. We had Filecoin, 260% gain in 262 days. Again, buying back here. Our trade alert went out October 5th, 2023, a year ago, uh, 260% in 662 days. It's up more now. Render up 282% in 100 days. And our uh, one of our top coins, INJ, up 568% in 159 days and so that would be about six months a little less than six months potentially turning 5k into 28,400 in, in six months you guys um that obviously more than pays for the service uh the file coin sorry injunction looking good now by the way so this thing continues to go higher and we're eyeballing coins that have even 4x more potential uh, i put out a buy shopping list to our retire rich members um just a month ago and with some coins that have potential for 25X, 40X, and even 100X. So go learn more about the uh, Retire Rich class if you have more in the markets and you'd really like to optimize the next bull run. Uh, lastly, on the commercials, if you'd like to work one-on-one -on -one with me, uh, go here and you can watch a short video and book a call. Uh, I have a limited number of time because I'm going in six directions to work with private clients. Some of you are here today. Uh, so anyway, um, do you want to make that available? I'm here to help you guys. Uh, I have plenty to do. I don't need to do that. But uh, for those of you that uh, really need or want that, you can reach out. Okay, um, we'll get to Solana here. I guess the good news is I, I sold that perfectly right up here at 160. Had buy limit orders to sell at 155 and 160. So I did that, took some profits and bought some altcoins, still holding a good size bag of Solana. But uh, we will be watching this now that resistance trend line is in place. But you guys, look at this. I mean, the early reversal indicator, hence the name. If you're trading and you're just using MACD and Stochastics and RSI, it's not enough. You're competing against us who have better superior signals. And uh, I'll put that radar back on because somebody asked for it. But um, these were developed by us and by Joe, 25-year quant engineer, trader, programmer. So um, here we have Solana, these order buy blocks and sell blocks. These are orders on the books and these have been excellent for us. The I was able to double my size of my Solana and my IRA trading these ranges here using these indicators just since May. Okay, so, um, you know, choppy sideways markets can be very profitable if you have the right signals and we have the right signals. You can have the right signals. Go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro and you can get those um, on the bullish side. So just just trading the green and red arrows, buy here, sell here. Now, if you're a more advanced trader and you're like, that's cute, nice little arrows. Yeah, yeah no, that's just that's just the visual we show you guys. The real oscillator is is make would make your eyeballs hurt. But essentially, it's looking for and finding, and we didn't know this at the beginning, it was an accidental discovery based on a pattern, but then we realized it's picking up institutional buying and selling, programmatic buying and selling, which is more likely to follow through and cycle to the other extreme. So when used in conjunction with our TSI, the trend strength indicator and even our RSI, uh, it's like 95%, especially when we layer in these other signals like our RSI Pro. Um, I'm all, I, Look, I'm not here to brag at everyone. I'm just saying that uh, if, you, if you really want to succeed in this markets to the maximum and who wouldn't during a bull run, these are tools that are uh, invaluable. Red arrow here, red there, look at that drop. And then the green called the bottom, green, green, pushed up, red, sell, red, sell, green, buy, red, sell. Out that hard, everyone. We've basically pulled the, back the curtain from the Wizard of Oz and shown you uh, how this really works. And uh, there's, there's, this is, you know, if we take everything off and you're just watching charts, uh, it's a lot harder, isn't it? Okay, so this class is just here to teach you guys how to trade these. So just as an example, again, what we're looking for is and this was a, an obvious sell that midpoint of the uh, sell order block detector that's part of our optim our order block our pro signals there that you get when you go over to that site and cryptomastery.org slash pro so um uh, bollinger bands too uh, i'll pull that up later really i'm looking for now the order block detectors showing by where the where are the limit sell orders already and generally the midpoint of the block is what we see hit 
And uh, so we saw that. Then we had a bearish ERI yesterday, bearish engulfing candle. Um, you know, I debated selling more here, but I want to see if this 50 day exponential moving average can hold. Uh, but sadly, I, I don't think that it will. If we lose this on the weekly or sorry, the daily basis, and the benefit of these signals is you can add alerts to them. So crossing down below 80. Okay, I'm going to put in my alert uh, message here as a sell. Now, the thing with Solana, though, is I'm just, I'm that's one I'm not going to sell ever, all of it. It's a rocket ship, and it does, when it runs, it doesn't always, it often doesn't pull back. Okay, oops, didn't want to do that. I want to also see if this trend line support can hold. So we have confluence here uh, for a bounce. And so it's certainly possible what I would hope to see for Solana and why I did an alert below 80 until it goes below and closes below 80, closing meaning at 8 p.m. Eastern when the candle for the daily candle closes and moves to the next one which is, it's actually midnight UTC time, but that's somewhere like in, uh, in I guess in Europe. But uh, but uh, at any rate, you guys know what I mean. And But until it does, closes below that, it's not a confirmed sell and we could see a bounce similar to these over here. So that's what we'd be hoping to see. At some point though, we will see another cycle down. Um, so I would suggest to you that um, if we do push higher and we start getting up in that higher ranges on Bitcoin, and we can already see here too on Solana, heavy sell pressure up here. I do, I will be selling at 200. I'll sell a bunch of it up in this zone and wait for a pullback. So again, this is how you can compound and grow your portfolio playing these ranges. So uh, I started with 50 Sol in my new iTrust uh, Capital IRA back in May. Um, I, I started it earlier in the year, but I moved it all in the Solana and I've been, I've turned it into 90 would have been 100, but I, I didn't hit click the final button on one of my trades. Just trading these ranges using the ERI and TSI. All right, not to belabor the point, you guys. And so um, what we'd also want to see here, um, this is the uh, signal line. It is still green, which is good. But if this comes down and turns red, that means we might have a deeper correction on our hands. And uh, so anyway, uh, let's uh, let me jump over to ETH. So uh, Ethereum. Um, Alexa, Alexa, off. Strangest thing. Uh, lately, it's been it's been doing that a lot. Over to Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum's not been doing well here, losing the fifty day exponential moving average, and this is not a good sign. I have these on here for some time. These uh, DCA levels, by the way. I'm holding some ETH, but uh, I may sell ETH here. Uh, or uh, and buy back in these green boxes. If ETH does drop down to 2000, I buy it all day long. But, uh, you know, because that ETH ETF didn't do well, um, and, and we were watching this here uh, last week here, this this zone here right at 2900 uh, prior support zone here, support all through here. When we lost that around the ETF, uh, area when it wasn't doing well. Now it's acting as resistance. So uh, ETH to me is a, is a sell. I'd look to buy it back later, but it is it is it has it has confirmed and broken below eighty. So if you're holding a lot of ETH, I would consider taking some off the table, having some powder dry to buy the dip. And where would that be? It would be in these order block regions here where we have indicated, and also when we see a green ERI early reversal indicator, hence the name and some of these signals to uh, go green here. Let's see, I'll go back over to the chat. Uh, Perry says, it'd be cool if you could overlay IBIT and BTC together. I mean, I would, but the IBIT chart I'm looking at um, is a was a four hour and I'd have to overlay it on a Bitcoin four hour. Tell you what, we, we, could, do, we could do that toward the end or maybe in the M3 class tomorrow. But let me uh, catch up on some chats here. Let's see the port strike. Yeah, the, uh, the port strike, uh, by the way, one of our members alerted us to that over the weekend. And so, and just to show you guys over in the M3 Active Trader, we have uh, we have uh, a lot of chatter going on here between the traders, uh, really smart traders in here. I did see some news on it, uh, Israel in there. But uh, this, someone posted about the port strike and back here on that was uh, Sunday, right? So we were passing that around on Sunday. And so I think that was Diogenes. But uh, let's see, Israel invade Lebanon. I guess that means that did. 
So uh, that may be the DXY spike. Jobs came in hot. We'll see if that gets revised down again. I mean, a lot of this, There's. I'm only one person. I don't get too bogged down on the economic data, although we do report it, uh, but I don't get into jobs and things. So it's good to have the trading group in here. A lot of smart traders. Let's see. Uh, terrorist attack. I've got a gnat here. Got bugs. So today is a weird day, you guys. Uh, terrorist attack in Tel Aviv at train station a few minutes ago. Four dead so far. Okay. So, um, you guys, if you really want to have your finger on the pulse of all this, uh, join our M3 Active Trader group because um, you also get the uh, basic versions of these indicators free. Not the pro, but you may not need that to start out with. But uh, likely this is contributing to the sell pressure uh, on the overall markets. Uh, Bitcoin down 1,000. Yeah, not not really not so much good news out there. So markets are pulling back. And, um, you know, I really don't like to see these going below the 50-day EMAs. We've seen a number of these attempts to break up, and then they, they get up, and then they fail at the upward trend channel. And it looks like on Chainlink, I don't like to do this, but uh, when we have more data points, I pro I'm going to re-angle this, I think, because we, we probably should account for that. That makes for a janky chart, though, um, at any rate. Chainlink, um, yeah, that's disappointing. Was really looking, hoping for a breakout above that $13. Um, I was on a private client uh, group call the other day, though, saying, don't buy Chainlink unless it comes down into this green zone, which it is, or above 13, which it didn't. Um, but because of this uncertainty, I would, even though there's a buy block here, I don't know. I would I would not go and buy this. Uh, Mary, I think you and I were talking, so um, hopefully did not buy Chainlink. The, the direction was above 13 or back down in here. But because of this uncertainty with the port and the war, Israel, Lebanon, I would wait. Watch it in here. Probably it's a good area at $11, but I'd wait to see some of our signals start to turn up on green. And I have a note on here, watch the weekly. So, um, you know, it's it's disappointing, though, because I uh, the weekly signals are very green. We're breaking above 20. We have signal going green. And if I put the ERI back on here, I guess it is on. Then, uh, you know, it uh, we had a nice arrow back in here, but it's still in a downward trending channel. You know, we just need a break. We need a break, get back above this $13 level on Chainlink. And I think Chainlink uh, runs but uh, these markets really do need some catalysts to the upside, that liquidity cycle starting, but we haven't seen signs of it yet. Now, I wouldn't panic at this candle. End of the day, we could see this bought up and get back above that 50-day EMA. Um, you know, we are at the time of the cycle where things should be going higher and soon. And so, let's see, TradingView does not let you draw over there. Sometimes it does, but uh, there. Okay, so um, uh, again, it's quiet week. I'd sit out. I wouldn't be buying anything. Um, uh, thanks for the link on the Taft Hartley Act. Uh, he's already said he's not going to do that. You guys can Google that and uh, learn more about it. All right. Um, good. Thank you, Perry. So uh, let's see. Let's do this. I'm going to pull up the trade success checklist. And if you guys want to use it to evaluate any trades here, I'm not seeing uh, much green in the markets here. Uh, but the VIX up 20%, um, understandably with, you know, war fears, volatility should be up. Uh, USDT money flowing into uh, Tether uh, as a, a Tether stablecoin dominance. So that's interesting. And uh, we just kind of have to see how this thing plays out. But ETH dominance, Sol dominance, both down. Bitcoin dominance marginally higher. But uh, let's see. All right. So somebody says, Adam, Nathan, Adam. Okay, good choice. Let me do this. You know what? I've got, I was working on this this weekend. Finally, finally have updated the uh, trade success checklist, you guys. And it looks great. Uh, the problem is, and Myrene, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. Uh, the um, uh, the check boxes are, I've broken somehow the uh, the the trade the, the trend success score let me just pull up the chat maybe she was able to fix that I know um and let's see no um Irene if you're there maybe you could uh go look for that note I sent you over the weekend for that but crypto mastery so inside of here the trade checklist 2024 and here we go um all right, I don't want that. I don't want it in, uh, hang on a second, guys. I need the PDF version of this. And for some reason, it's opening it up. 
in uh, the wrong format. Let me just do this. Uh, it's 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 like what is that Mercury retrograde? I, I'm not one of those astrology people, but I have to say when that thing's happening, all kinds of things go haywire. Uh, so we must be in uh, one of those. All right. And let's see. I'm off screen trying to open up. I've got too many controls and screens here. Uh, this is, is frozen on me. Wow. What is going on, you guys? So I'm going to have to uh, control alt delete out of Adobe Acura Acrobat, uh, which is not working at all. And hopefully not crash this entire system. Well, we're working with that net here, guys. We are live, so bear with me. I may need to use a different version of the software. I think what I'll do is I'll open it up uh, in this other PDF um, program that I just clicked on, and it has completely disappeared. So, uh, you know, uh, no, and there it looks. We're not going to give up, you guys. A And it crashed. Well, show's over, guys. Everyone, I'll see you next week. I'm just kidding. But uh, this, I have to say, we've had more issues on today's class than we have, ever, I think, ever. Let me try it in Acrobat. Okay, here's Acrobat. And I think this might be the new one. Yesterday. Let's try that. It's going to be worth the wait, you guys. I promise. I think this is the new version. Um, all right, hang on. And it is frozen. Well, all right, you guys, uh, this may not be doable. And I did re I did reboot, but here, okay. So the check boxes are not working on all of these. Some of them they are, and the uh, trade success score is, is not functioning. So we're working on that. So at any rate, if you're new here and haven't seen this before, uh, you can download this at our website and uh, follow along. This is basically the, the way you can max, uh, dramatically maximize your return on trades by using this trade success checklist and, and mostly this order. And so when we see a green ERI arrow, the early reversal indicator, which indicates a bullish reversal where sellers, uh, that's wrong, that buyers are in control. I copy paste it from down below. Work in progress, guys. I know the old one. Um, uh, it, it, the old, old one is correct. We just didn't have all the indicators on there. So this is that arrow right here. So we would check that box. And then the TSI, the trend strength indicator, when we have it go green above 20, that would be another one. And uh, then that would increase the score. So as you start getting a trade success score over two or three or four, we want to be taking that trade. So let me hop back over. We'll look at uh, Adam and, you know, uh, by the way, uh, thanks, uh, Nathan, for putting Adam back on my radar because that was one we traded quite a bit back in 2021 and it just fell off my radar. And this is partially why it's been bleeding out for uh, a long time here. So um, Adam um, and I, I told we talked about that the other day, Nathan. So until it gets back above this downtrending channel and or above that 50 day exponential moving average, it's not a buy for me. Um, it's coming down into a buy block where there are buy limit orders. So, but the volume is just really dried up on Cosmos and it's just, it's gone out of favor. Had a blip back here in May of 2023, tried to get up, just sold off, sold off. And the problem with these is, I'll go to a weekly just to get rid of some of the noise. Wait a minute. Adomera, did they change their name? No. No, I'm sorry. Wrong chart. You guys are probably blowing up the chat. Uh, I didn't know there was something called Adamera, and I just clicked on the first one. Uh, okay, so <laughs> uh, thankfully, this chart isn't as nearly as bad, but but actually, it's it's not as good either because there's no buy blocks um, on the weekly, maybe the daily. Okay, daily has some buy blocks, but kind of the same the same kind of pattern actually. Uh, maybe looks almost the same, but it, either way, these downtrending channels. So, all right, so it was trying to break out of that trend channel and got up and now it's failed back down below. So what we would want to look for here, Nathan, is, and I wouldn't buy any yet, I would want to wait to see if it can hold this trend line support because really what we want is to, to know when a new upper trend channel has formed. And usually you need a couple data points on that. 
And uh, so I know that's not entirely easy to do. I would say on, on Cosmos, if you believe in it, to buy some at $4.20 in the middle of this buy block using a limit order, but not go too heavy because if it continues to drop, um, you know, I would buy more down at $3.50 if this is a project you're really hot on. But the problem is all of these sellers throughout here are going to be wanting to get out at break even. So all of these pumps here where people took, you know, bought in, they're really their goal is to sell out at break even. So you're going to have sell pressure in this range and probably, you know, obviously up here there's sell order blocks. It's going to be a longer term hold. It doesn't have a lot of a great narrative around it. So unfortunately, you know, I wouldn't buy any now, though. Our our, our TSI says all we need to know. It's it's red below 80. Now, these can stay up above here an overbought area for a while. But once they turn and break, it's going to be a week, I'd say at least, you know, around a week coming down and then maybe. Um, but try to catch it on uh, the bullish TSI going green and above 20 on that. But anyway, so back to here, uh, if we wanted to use the uh, trade success checklist and go back in time, we could go back here and uh, let's actually do a bars replay on this so I can show you. And um, let's see, there it is. I'll go back to over here. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to pretend that it is September 3rd and we're going to kind of watch and see what the signals tell us. So I'm going to go here. And I'll go forward one candle. No, not a buy. See that red candle? Let me zoom in a bit, you guys, so you guys are following along. And this is a good way to test yourself, by the way. Uh, there's this thing up here called the bars pattern, where, bar replay, where you go back and then you just advance it down here. So here, not a buy, not a buy, and then going down lower. So obviously, good that we didn't buy earlier. And now we have our first signal of potential buy, a bullish engulfing candle and our RSI showing bullish divergence. So I'm gonna hit buy with that, okay? Let me jump over here and I'll show you where this is now in the trade success checklist. Is the RSI Pro showing a green circle? Okay, it is, so that's bullish. And um, also a bullish engulfing candle, I believe is in here as well. We have a several patterns like the three inside up is a little bit more advanced. And bullish engulfing is kind of one of those, uh, it's 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 not um, one that I, we gave a whole thing to here. Oh, no, it is. I thought, I'm sorry, there it is. Bullish engulfing. So we'd have two more checks on that. And so, good, we'd buy that one. And usually I like three indicators to line up. Uh, is, in, sorry, trying to do too many things at once. I'd like to see at least three of our signals to line up before buying. Sometimes I'll just use the ERI TSI. Otherwise, I want to see three of these. So now we're one buy in. I do recommend that you're legging into positions, not going all in. Now we moved ahead a day. We see our early reversal indicator showing. So that's another buy. The TSI went green, but is not yet above 20. So we'll wait another, we'll wait another day on that. So we'll advance one more day. Boom. Now this is above 20, I would add to the position. So now we're, we're legging into this position, as we can see, based on these trade success principles. So I'll go ahead another one and see if anything else lines up. Uh, and we had the signal line just go green. So I missed it by a day, I'll buy another one. And uh, now, now we have that trend indicator, which is our key bell sequence. So point is, as more of these line up, they are based on different algorithms and we have confluence, these are times to be adding to the position. So our trend indicator will show a key when we a new trend is about to form, the bell is the buy signal. So we're gonna buy another one here, you know, and that can mean several things to you. So I'm just gonna keep going with this and now we're gonna wait for sell signals. We don't have any, we see our keep, our trend indicator going through the seven steps, which will also get a sell signals in the form of dollar signs. But now we have a bearish engulfing candle and we have a bearish ERI. So that's a bit um, bearish. So we might want to sell two of our positions because we had two bearish signals and we'll go forward here. So we've saved some there, but then it re came back. We had another bullish engulfing candle. So I'd buy one there. So this is a little bit more active trading. Um, if you want to do this on a weekly time frame, you can. But now we have the bag of money and we're up into overbought territory. And so we're kind of saying maybe we should sell some here 
and get out of this trade. I'll sell two more. I think we flattened the trade now. And uh, and so, no, I, 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 I didn't have the window fully up. So I'm not sure we're flat, but here this bag of money tells you to get out. So it's a bit long-winded example, but this is how you win in the trading. So now we have our bearish ERI up top. I'm going to flat, go flat on the trade. Okay. And so let's go ahead and see this. Let's see. Now I'm short. I don't want to be short. I want to be flat. Okay. So now I'll just let this thing play out, you guys. We'll see what happens. And it, even if it went higher a little bit, I mean, in technically, I guess I should have stayed in the trade because the, the TSI did not come down below 80. I'm just trying to uh, be a little bit here. Let's, let's zoom out so we can see it. It did push higher, but uh, we're out of the trade. And let's see how that went from there. And then it kind of rolled over. So basically, a uh, 62% uh, win rate, even with me blowing it there on uh, over um, clicking on the buttons. But that's how you can use this to really learn the trade success checklist because we had a number of different patterns play out there. We had the key and the bell. I forgot to check this off. So we had the bell signal. And uh, But these are the four horsemen, the ERI, the TSI, signal, bell, and uh, then we can interchange the RSI Pro on that. On the bearish side, um, and then by the way, someone asked about the radar. Radar is great. If it's green in all time frames, check that off. That's very bullish. And whereas uh, all red is very bearish. We do have other indicators here. I talked about the, um, uh, the buy sell blocks. So if we get down into a buy limit order block, that's bullish. Okay. Again, as you're checking these off, the trade success score, if it's over two or three, you want to be adding to that position. And that's how you can really great make some great wins on this. The dynamic ATR I didn't talk about yet. And let me just refresh this page, get rid of the uh, other signs on this. And I'll pull up, let's see, I don't want to, Casper has not done well, but that's why we were waiting to break out up here and we didn't get that. All red on the radar. So Caspa is a, is a sell, uh, although it's already come down, certainly not a buy. If you see all red on the radar, don't buy anything, period. Uh, don't buy any of that coin. Some coins might be green on the radar, but generally they uh, they run in tandem. Uh, let's take a look at Sui. Sui's been in the news lately. Uh, and so I'll just put the rest of this away. Um, by the way, on the ERI Pro, these light green boxes are money flow. So where we saw a buy block here, where limit buy orders were, and we saw money flow of actual buyers coming in, huge signal. And sure enough, Sui has pushed up quite a bit uh, up to uh, close to a sell block. So I wouldn't be chasing it there. Uh, the dynamic ATR right in here, when that flips to entry is another good signal. And uh, back if we had that on our chart for the last coin, it would have been down in this range, ATR going green. Sometimes that'll get you into the trade early. You don't want to be in it when it's in exit mode. You can also use it as your dynamic stop loss. Some people do that. So if you were long back here and it broke and turned exit, you would have used that as your stop loss to maybe go short. And if you had gone short there, it would have been a great trade riding it all the way down, covering your short here, uh, maybe shorting again. But uh, anyway, we're not here to talk about shorting, but lo lots of tools for different levels of traders. Check that off if you see that go long. And then on the short short side of things, uh, all bearish radar, three inside down, and uh, tra trend lines. The Bollinger Band Pro, we haven't talked about that. Those of you that uh, people always ask, how do you use, when do you take profits? One of the best ways is with our Bollinger Bands, which are different than your, your normal Bollinger Bands. If you go buy Bollinger Bands, or you're sorry, using the free versions on TradingView, they don't work. They're not configured right for crypto. Ours uses a modified Bollinger Band and we have color coded it so that if you see a red vertical line, that's a sell signal because it's getting overbought, touching the upper Bollinger Band usually will revert back to the mean, which you see here. Okay, right here did the same. If it closes above the line, you'll get this vertical red line. But even if it touches it, usually that's a sell signal. See right here, beautiful sell signal on SUI because it went down, down, down. And what most people don't realize and my friend Steve Nissen taught me this. When it hits one edge of the Bollinger Band, usually it'll revert to the other one. So here we had a great trade to get out. Uh, we weren't watching it. We didn't take the trade, but potentially could have had a great sell and short back down to the lower Bollinger Band where it touched, pushed up to the median before resuming the downtrend. 
if you are in an uptrend and you buy low and you want to sell high, you know, up through here, it can ride the upper Bollinger Band, but it didn't touch it. It touched it here and sold off. So it is a rejection zone. Those are the two areas that I look to sell in the sell order block areas or the upper Bollinger Band. So guys, we, we're making this as easy as possible. Uh, so let's see, Perry says it would be really helpful if both website and the PDFs themselves had a date or version number on them too, then we would know. Um, that's a good idea, Perry. Uh, and, and I've named it that way, but uh, I will take that to heart and we'll see if we can't give it a, um, a version number, like putting it up here. That's a good idea. Thank you. So uh, what we'll do is we'll do that. We'll fix the, uh, I think probably this was me breaking it. There were boxes in there and I was seeing two boxes. I thought it was doubling up. One was the visual, one was the coding of the check mark. And I somehow broke the mechanics of the uh, this, which would incrementally, incrementally go up. All right. Uh, back to the uh, charts here, guys. Uh, question. Uh, let's see how we do on time, by the way. Coming right up at 90 minutes. Got about seven minutes left. Um, yeah. Okay. So Perry's saying that don't think you caught the answer to this. Is it a bit of both forward and lagging on the radar? Well, I'm going to think it's, so it's oscillators are lagging indicators, but because they, when they're oversold and turning up higher, maybe let's do this. I, I say maybe, because I'm not sure if I still have access to this version of the stochastics oscillator. It might be this one. Uh, no, it is not. So bear with me here. It, and you won't have these, but I want to show you what I mean, because it's based on a version of the stochastic oscillator that Joe created that, uh, it might be this one actually. That's the one. Okay. Um, so what, what, what we're seeing here is it's red on this daily time frame because the blue line is below the red. This is the standard stochastic oscillator with somewhat smoothed parameters. You don't need to know that. So this is, it's lagging because these are, these are oscillators based on a sort of a moving average. But it's predictive in the sense that when these reject at overbought levels, typically they will revert at least to the mean and often because this is a smooth stochastic oscillator, they're more likely to go to the other extreme. Does that make sense? So in that sense, they're predictive, even though the actual visual is um, is lagging. Okay, so it's like Wayne Gretzky used to say, I go where the puck is going to be. Does he know for sure where the puck is going to be? No, but based on his experience, it, generally he knows where it is. Okay, so I can't answer that definitively other than it's both. If the stochastic oscillator had come down to zero and then pushed higher and got above 20, this would have gone green on the radar on the daily. Okay. Uh, and I think it's based just in directionally. Is it above? I'd have to double check uh, the settings with Joe. But, but the point being, when it comes off oversold extremes, kind of like the TSI, and goes higher, it's more likely, once it breaks above that 20 line, it's more likely to continue to the other extreme. And if we look at price, that's exactly what happened. We went oversold, also hit the lower Bollinger Band, and then broke up. The radar would have been green through here on the daily, hit the upper Bollinger Band, you see that lower to higher. Really, you guys, watch, use this Bollinger Band on uh, on your trades, because it's it can be uh, phenomenal. Um, but to answer your question again, and I'll hide these other signals, just looking at the radar. Let me move this up. So hopefully I'm explaining this well. It's currently going down, so it's red. The weekly flickered up there a sec for, for a second. So we'll look at the weekly in a moment. But in these moves higher, the radar is green. And when it's going down and the blue is below the red, it's red. Okay. And this, so the weekly is trying to get green here, right? So what this shows is as the blue line is flirting with going below the red line on SUI, but it's flickering, see? So that can happen at any point. Weekly, you know, weekly is lagging, obviously. But, but look at this also, what's the other clue? It's touching that upper Bollinger Band. 
And so Sui is overbought here. I wouldn't be buying it. I think it probably reverts back down to $1.20 or so. And that's how you can use these predictably. They reject off, to over, off of overbought levels. Either Bollinger Bands are modified crypto Bollinger Bands and then pulling back out of sell order blocks or back to the mean. Think of this as a rubber band. So when you pull it up really close to the top of the rubber band and you let the rubber band go, right? What does it do? It pushes the price back down and it usually goes to the opposite uh, extreme or down to support. Uh, you know, it's an art and a science, everybody. So hopefully that answers that question. And if we go to the monthly, I already can tell you that the blue is below the red. Well, Sui's not old enough, so we don't have that data. Uh, it's interesting that it's showing red on Sui when we don't really have that data. But if we go to a, a coin like Bitcoin, you know, um, on a, a monthly uh, time frame, red, because the blue line is below the red line. If we go to a quarterly, it will be up. Let's go to a weekly. And so we see that the blue line is going up. So it's giving us a weekly. So the point is when they're all in confluence, pay attention. It's a, a near-term predictive uh, you know, indicator. I just, I just would never buy anything if it was all red on the radar, uh, partially because the programs, the pro programmatic buying selling uses this type of um, indicator. It, they use simple things generally. All right. That was a long winded answer. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's see. It's the likelihood for oscillations. Yes. But also the likelihood of follow through on the oscillation. Right. So uh, you know, there's confluence in that. I'm trying to think of a better analogy, maybe like the wind that's blowing. And, you know, you've used, you've heard me use the analogy of the size of the ship. You can turn a speedboat around a whole bunch of times. If you're on a jet ski, you're like a day trader. You can turn around a lot. If you're on a, you know, you've got a, you got a 30 foot boat, you know, you can pretty ad adaptive. That's like the daily charts. You can turn up and down uh, pretty fast if you've got a bigger boat. Um, like a cruise ship, that thing's going to take longer to turn around. You know, they can turn around, it's going to take them longer. And, um, you know, where you have like a battleship, that thing's like the monthly chart. Things are huge. Um, I don't know this. I'm not military, so I don't know. Maybe they can turn around. But, you know, the point is the momentum is is going to take it, is more likely to take it in that direction. And, uh, you know, if the wind, these aren't wind powered, but, but you, you get what I'm saying. I'm all over the place on that one. I don't know sailboats really that well at all. Uh, mostly speedboats. I will try to learn up on that. I'm going to the Annapolis Power Boat Show this weekend. So I will learn me some uh, boat lingo and uh, get back to you guys. Follow through. That's it. Like a pendulum, that's a good two or ringing. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Dr. T, live news. Iran fires missile attack on Israel. Uh-oh. Well, you guys, I know I've been saying, uh, button your, fasten your seatbelts, button your chin straps, and um, get ready for anything. And um, let me do this because we have been, you know, at least you guys, ha I've been showing you this for a while now, the path to 150K Bitcoin. And uh, I've got several studies over on the trading view that you can go watch. We've been following uh, these potentials here. Um, here, the Bitcoin update and the top 10 factors leading to 150K to 250K Bitcoin. Right in here, which one is a uh, global conflict over uh, the negative factors for not having it? Escalation of international wars and fears. So, yeah, I, I thought I just pulled that here. Let's look at it because we have to keep this in mind that this is a factor. And so we have the bullish factors. We have bricks. <laughs> it's it's like a, a manic, it's like a multiple personality. You know, Bitcoin and crypto is a multi multiple personality bipolar individual or entity. Uh, yeah. So basically here are the 10 factors started with seven. Now we have 10. Of course, a green check mark is firmly there. We have the ETFs money flow. Good. Firmly a check mark. BTF lending, uh, BTF funding program ended bank failures pushes money to Bitcoin. Well, we're, we had more bank failures. We haven't seen that extra liquidity come in. So that's a question mark. QE and money printing, you know, that's sort of there. Has it started yet? It hasn't really started yet. So that's still not there. But when these all go green check marks, we're going to see a lot happen. De-dollarization and USD hyperinflation bricks. You guys, I saw some news recently yesterday and we can dig it up if we want, but I'm going to put 
this now as a check. Uh, ooh, not there. I want to see a check mark. Copy, paste right in there. Oops. The bricks, the bricks stuff is happening, and um, you know these are all things that are going to reduce supply for the dollar. Now, why is the dollar up if the bricks has just announced? I'll pull up that news. But anyway, corporate accumulation, clearly there. Michael Strategy, as we call him, is buying and no stop of buying Bitcoin. Country adoption of Bitcoin as reserve currency. Uh, El Salvador now firmly, firmly validated as heroes. Um, I'm hearing Venezuela has, has just said they will use it as a reserve currency, but they didn't go all in like El Salvador did. So that's still kind of a question mark with the green um question mark i want to see another country or two i want to see country fomo post having reduced miner supply yes uh check mark less available exchange supply demand surge so that sort of started happening but that's not green yet political support in favor of bitcoin and crypto yeah we're getting that number 10 global fiat debt bubble commercial real estate crash still in the wings uh which could leave a uh, flight to quality to bitcoin however over here is escalation negative factors for lower cycle highs in 2024 this could limit the highs escalation of international wars and fears and we have a number of them china taiwan still sort of smoldering israeli iran heating iraq uh sorry, not iraq uh there's, God, there's so much conflict in the world russia ukraine um you know uh maybe some cooling off I, it seems like those guys want to find a deal and, and and not cough this war nonsense but uh iran and israel and the Middle East, uh, not good, not good. Um, and I, it's a, I, so Iran fires missiles. Yeah, that's that's not good, you guys. Um, you know, yeah, the banter bubbles all red. Well, look, we've got the we've got the port, we've got war. Oh, deep breath, everyone. Hold on. Um, you know these things tend to resolve but i my concern now is we do see a 15 percent pullback may want to lighten some positions here and uh you know i i it's that darn fomo is so hard remember we're pushing up here and i had i said to myself uh well we were sort of breaking above that trend line resistance but in reality had to redraw the angle of that uh, parallel trend line which happens it happens you guys but i was saying to myself you know, we're overbought here. We I should probably take some off the table. But but I was just thinking, man, well, what if we get that big pump and all the alts for green and uh, it's going to be great, you know, you know, it's, it's then, you know, and then Monday, I just had a feeling we'd have a pullback. But the problem with those, I'm still fine holding it this way, because the problem is if we had sold and we had the big green candle, then we'd really be kicking ourselves. Uh, yeah, uh, Perry, the banksters are busy keeping the wars going. War is good for their business. Uh, you know, widest bull flag ever right now. At some point, at some point, you guys, this is no longer a bull flag. But I, I, I am holding to that IBIT study. And as if we go down and fill that, where did it go? I think I closed it. Um, Dollar starting to pull back a little bit. Um, I'm not really clear on the dollar oil per dollar per barrel, uh, how that relationship works. So if you guys do, let me know. But let's pull up. Did I finish my Elliott Wave theory? We'll, we'll we'll dive into this more tomorrow in the M3 class. I have some more comments on this. Basically, this is proposing we go to 150k. And uh, that would be the bull flag measured move, in my opinion. Uh, this is the flag. This is the flagpole. Uh, you know, <clears throat> some of you are drawing the flagpole back here, but that's not true. Then the that's that's the bottom of wave two flagpole here. <clears throat> measured move to 150K and out of this buy block would make the most sense. <clears throat> but maybe we only get to 100K. So because of these wars that keep popping up and and uh, all kinds of things. Japan's saying they might raise rates again. We need them to get with the program. But if that happens, it could be there's more of that Japan carry trade. Uh, they we, it goes Those of you in M3, we talk about that and what happened there. And that's what kind of brought the market down from back in this range. So um, uh, we have a lot of if, thens, and maybes right now. So when in doubt, stay out. If you're in cash, I'd recommend staying in cash. 
If you have some powder dry and wait for the next signals, maybe into the end of the week and the cycle low would be the time to start deploying. Uh, we already covered the I bit, so I won't go back to that. But um, again, that open um, gap there could see us to go down another 20, 15 percent. But uh, at 53,000, yeah, I'd be buying Bitcoin there. Double double bottom there in that buy range. And most of all, waiting for our signals to go firmly green. And uh, and that would be the, the sign to get back in. Let me see. Oh, pardon me. On our screener, by the way, you get a screener with us. Uh, on the weekly, this covers the RSI and the signal. Nothing looking bullish on a weekly here on a daily time frame. Uh, also, uh, near protocol looks green on Coinbase. Let's see if that looks good. I wouldn't buy anything right now, though, you guys, with things down so much. I mean, my my uh, my my list is uh, down considerably here. Uh, you know. Darn it. All these all these that I just really thought were ready to go. But I will say this. My pain is your gain. Every time I I emotion, I, I um, what is it? I don't want to say this when I let my conscious mind, my rational mind overtake what I know to be true with our indicators. I always regret it. Because Monday I started seeing this ERI. And the TSI going red, and I'm like, and the signal turning down, and I'm like, um, con you know, confirmation bias. I'm like, I didn't want to face the fact that all of that effort and th these gains might be going down. I really thought we were going to push higher, and I just had to put my head in the sand. I was working late, and I should have taken some off the table. And I should take some off the table now. I'm going to take my own advice. We're firmly broken down on blur. And probably you know, it's heading down to 18 cents and I should sell half my position, dollar cost average and buy it back lower. So that would be my recommendation to you and consider doing the same. Our signals firmly showing more downside. Uh, the caveat on it, INJ is it has some buy support on this uh, buy block and uh, it is retesting the breakout of its long trending resistance channel so you know it's tough when these don't align it's great when they all align what i would say though on coins like inj when these start to go green and this holds this buy block and we got our tsi green again and these are green again we want to make crypto green again <laughs> let me get a hat for that you guys make crypto green again that's funny um but and we are still green on the weekly time frames that momentum. So again, I think daily pullback for a few days, and then we go higher. Um, but you know it's hard to see in the moment. We did we you know we have to be prepared. But ten percent pullbacks on all these still in upward trending channels. But as we have seen in the past, you know trust these indicators. Uh, we have ERI here, TSI red. We dropped, we bounced, we dropped to the lower edge of this trend channel. So stacks also could come down on the lower edge of this trend channel, but sometimes we get an earlier bounce. It's it's really tough right now because the narratives and the sentiment are going to drive this. And I'm really looking and hoping for another higher low, like stacks because of these buy blocks to hold here and push higher. And I, you know, I do think this zigzag pattern will play out on stacks. But we've got a little, you know, we've got to get, you know, into November here and clear some of these strong sell blocks overhead. So um, we're not out of the woods yet, guys. It's, uh, just more patience is required. I know, I know. Uh, it, our patience will hopefully be rewarded. But, um, you know, again, there was too much bullishness in the market. So that's a TLDR. All right, let's sell half now. So Murphy's Law makes the market turn around right away. Perry, yes, go do that. Uh, I'm right behind you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Hopefully yours is the one that, uh, but no, I mean, I, I think that's, Murphy's law is your law when it comes to crypto trading. And so, uh, and, and doing, uh, in the marketing field, doing product launches, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Um, so anyway, guys, hopefully that's helpful. You know, I, my point is the takeaway is trust the indicators. If you don't have them, um, get them could have avoided this 2000, this $4,000 drop since yesterday. And uh, certainly, um, you know, but I had drawn this pullback likely sure, sure enough we got it so a bit of a zigzag i'll move it out 
to there. Sometimes that works. My psychicism uh, sometimes is early and I have to give it a little bit of a uh, extension. I know that's not a word, you guys, but uh, it is now psychicism. All right, everyone. Thanks very much. I think that's all we have. Uh, join us for M3 tomorrow. Again, if you're not a part of M3, great time to join. We have had, added some new members. And, you, you know, um, like I said, great group. And, um, you know, for the people, very active community in there on a daily basis. And uh, learn all about it here. Great cheat sheets. Uh, uh, high probability uh, trading patterns here. We have our dollar cost average worksheet, which is same one I use for my private clients. If you would like help optimizing your portfolio, reach out and book a call on the website. I do a number of that where we'll go through and um, rebalance your portfolio. You key in how much you have to invest and we'll go through and we'll reallocate by percentages, which gives dollar amounts. And uh, as we go along, you can change those percentages, which changes dollar amounts. There's an old saying, plan your day, work your plan, plan your week, work your plan. Same thing in crypto. You want to have a plan of attack with the coins that you want to own, the right ones. Uh, it does change over time. And, uh, you know, um, and not be chasing the the pump of the day. I know several people close to me that I know have gone bankrupt and, and gotten wrecked doing that. Okay, trying to chase the latest hot hot mover on Coinbase, invariably you will be buying when they're selling it to you and it'll go down. You want to buy quality projects, <clears throat> uh, manage and mitigate your risk, manage, you know, skew the investments to the safer ones in the beginning. I still think uh, Bitcoin Link and Sol will lead this run, not so much Ethereum, sadly. Uh, and then the profits taking will come out of those into some of these alts. And uh, and so having some moon or bus coins, um, if those, if you'd like to see a, uh, we can walk walk through a sample worksheet. But it's yours to play with. It's I'll set it up with you, and so that's a great resource. Uh, and if you'd like help with that, book a call. Otherwise, you can get it as a bonus here on M three, portfolio tracker, trading patterns, and you get our basic crypto mastery indicators. For the pro indicators, go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro. Guys, uh, do that. Uh, don't just listen and say, well, I, I don't, I, you know, it is worth the money. It'll, if it saves you from one bad trade, uh, you've paid for it. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, last thing, core. Uh, okay, I'm out of time, Leslie. I'll do it for you. But, but let me just, just, a lot of news coming in. Uh, see, are, are you guys Perry all red today? Banter bubbles. Yeah, well, just blow ETFs, crypto price. Yeah, that's probably true. The ETFs want prices low to buy again. Uh, let's sell half now. Uh, yeah, we talk, talked about that. Check, uh, Leslie say checking on core now. You said earlier that if the chart is all red, no buying. Okay, um, let's pull up core. I do like core. I believe we talked about that in Retire Rich last week. That was one of Mike's recommendations. And so core Dow, I guess we'll pull it up on uh, MEXC. And so the radar all red. I'll uh, put our TSI. Uh, yeah, core is, is a no-go. I mean, it pushed right up into a cell block zone. You know, last week here we had, um, let me turn on the ERI, see what that gave us. Guys, the ERI, early reversal indicator. It's the best early indicator I found, hence the name. So ERI yesterday, TSI breaking below 20 yesterday. If you'd followed that, you would have been out of core yesterday and avoiding the downturn that's incoming on that. Signal line also red, core is going down lower. Where would it go? 80 cents, lower Bollinger Band, probably a good place, but I don't see buy blocks, so I wouldn't be buying anything without buy blocks right now. Now, on a weekly time frame, it's a really tricky one. We're waiting for these to push up above, and you can see I have an alert already uh, for when, not if, but when the the core uh, TSI goes above 20 on the weekly time frame. That's my buy cue. Uh, thanks, Leslie. Yeah, that was Retire Rich last week. Cool project. Um, not ready to run yet. Not just yet. So hopefully uh, that helps. Let's see. What did you say? Core is all red. Uh, last week, so Mike had recommended it last Thursday and wrecked to buy only up to $1.20. Yeah, I mean, well... 
So Mike, uh, you know, Mike is great. He doesn't use these signals. Uh, and so right in here, I could see dollar 20 was as a resistant sell zone. I mean, where, where would I buy core? I'd, I'd buy it at 80 cents potentially, but I just feel like there's really, there's stronger projects for now. And, uh, you know, what I would say, I'm a little bit different. I like to buy into strength. I'm going to set an alert on core. I don't really want to look at it until it's a, over a dollar 30, because then that tells me from a timing perspective that it has momentum at its back. I'd rather pay more than risk it drifting down lower and lower. Does that make sense? And as long as it's below this 50 day exponential moving average, uh, it, it's, it's like, uh, a redheaded, I shouldn't say this, but the redheaded stepchild, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not going to get most of my interest there. You want to be above the 21 and 50 day exponential moving average. We talk about this as the ice, the thin ice is the 21 day. The thick ice is the harder one to break above, but it's also the most stable for above that thick ice. If you're out on the ice skating on the lake, what do you want to be on thin ice or thick ice? You want to be on the thick ice. You got lots of safety skating along, skating along. But once you pop, once you fall through the ice once, if you can get back above it, stay out of it for a while. Because look what happens. We'll zoom in on this because it's a good analogy. Uh, and that I made up here is so where was I though? Once you thought fall below the ice once, if you can get back above, chances are you can fall back below and then you're drowning, right? You got two layers of ice overhead. Uh, this case, it got back above firmly, but, um, you know, I, I use that ice analogy. And right now we are below the ice on core and likely we'll drift down. And, and so there's until we, until we find some support, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch this until I see a green ERI TSI use that trade success checklist. Uh, we'll get you the new version as soon as we fix it. You guys, uh, I'm sure that Myrene will be working on that soon and, uh, and apologies for me breaking that, but I wanted to get the new signals in there. And we'll put a version on it. Okay, uh, let's see. Yes, retire rich. Uh, Perry is more of a long term view, right? So uh, correct. So buying some core now, per perfectly fine. <laughs> that's why it. That's why we have the two services. Okay, um, we have several services, but um, just to recap what they are, we have the um, you know our newsletter, which is for longer term. We've had some phenomenal wins. It's one buy recommendation per month. We just opened up Moonstream Light. So if you want to get involved in that, but people, uh, we launched Active Trader for people who had more, wanted more active trades in and out. Retire Rich is like the newsletter on steroids. We are meeting weekly for doing a live session. These are great, by the way. Go check that out. Um, and we are working on consumer financing, by the way. It's not inexpensive, but if you could finance it over two years and uh, five or 10x or 20 or 40x your money in crypto, um, you know, uh, and, and make sure you're selling, we'll be telling you when to sell on a lot of the cases. So anyway, that is uh, a membership site, Retire Rich. Go, uh, we have just, we didn't used to have this, but we have a page here showing some of the prior wins. And there's a video um, highlight of an actual class. So go check this out if you haven't already. And uh, Mike does a, this is a, this is kind of the macro strategy overall of what it is about. It's 30 minutes. And then there's a highlight reel of a previous class that Mike and I did where we had some really interesting uh, picks. And uh, Mike is great. You guys, he, he he's so good at the macro side. I don't know if you can see this and hear this, but uh, this is a, a highlight reel. First half, Mike does a breakdown of macro, what's going on. And then in the last half, I'm doing one over our coins. And uh, some of these have uh, had phenomenal results here. And so, um, and and, uh, and then you can sign up for that. So anyway, check that out. Uh, but it is for different time frame investors. If you're not sure which one you are, reach out to us, book a call and uh, with me. You actually can book with me and we'll figure out what's best for you. But now is the time to be paying attention, everyone, and uh, to not be kicking yourself when the next bear market comes saying, I wish I had gotten more involved in all this. It's uh, it's ready to go. Let's see. I'm out of time, you guys. Uh, we'll see you in M3 tomorrow. And uh, so thanks, everybody. Uh, we will uh, talk to you soon and uh, have a good one. Bye, everyone.